Looking really forward to having a good conversation because this is really about you. A couple things I want to say uh, before, before I ask the panel to uh, come up and talk about them. As I said, we've got about an hour. And you should be sitting uh, within your respective areas. And one of the reasons that uh, we coordinated it this way with obviously our great friends at OSD, OSBP, was because we wanted you to get to know each other. And hopefully you've been taking advantage of that since yesterday and throughout today and certainly throughout tomorrow. If you haven't gotten to know who your neighbor is, you're gonna have a good chance to do it over the next, next hour because this is about you. When you look at this banner behind us and you think about what it is you do from perspective of the Department of Defense, I think every year when they're trying to think of a theme and what is about small business that, that makes your role so vital and so important. You know, we know that for those that are in the Department of Defense, it's all about the service member. It's about what you do to support the men and women who wear the cloth of our nation to go forward to do the bidding of our country, do what they need to do, and then come back home safe to their families. And from our perspective at SBA, we want to help you find small businesses who can help them do that. You are the key. You know, uh, Rob Wong said the other day, you know, who does it better than you? So I'm going to ask you, who does small business better than you? Nobody. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. Who does small business better than you? Nobody. Do you really believe it? Okay. If you really, really believe it, it's one of those things that happens to get inside of you and it stays with you. I want to first ask a quick show of hands, okay? A show of hands if you have been involved in small business for less than five years. Okay? All right, pull those down. If you have been involved in small business from five to ten years. All right, about a third of the room. For those of you over ten years. Okay? Yeah, this is one of those jobs that it is more than loving it. Uh, I used to tell my contracting officers, contracting is a job you either love or you hate. There is no middle ground. You, you, you like the challenge that contracting gives you. But I take it a step further when we talk about small business. Small business, you gotta love. I mean, it is, you get to make a difference every single day. And you may not be the benefactor to see how that difference is realized in terms of who actually got that contract or who got that award, but your efforts to try and find small business to help you in this process is, is, is critical and it, it really is, I think, one of the most rewarding jobs, if not the most rewarding job, the most rewarding career you could, you could absolutely have. I've got the pleasure today, we're going to talk a little bit about some best practices. So how do we help you? Uh, our folks from SBA have, have been given a tasking, and that tasking was they needed to get around, introduce themselves to our DOD partners that uh, are here, and ask you how we can help you do your job better. What are the policies, programs, and executions we do in SBA that, what's good, what's working that you say, hey, we should keep that? What's not working? Because of the way either our policies are being done, our practices are being done, and what are some things we haven't even thought of that we should think of? And that's how you can help us shape the future and how we can help you do that. Because as you take care of our men and women and you give them that combat support, think about this. You know, you heard Rob during his keynote earlier today, and what did he say? You know, he said, when a large business gets a contract, they shift the workforce from one contract to, to another. But when a small business gets a contract, they're probably going out and they're probably hiring. And so when small business gets a contract, that means jobs. And when jobs come into a community, that means that community starts to do better. And they start to thrive a little bit better. And when that community starts to thrive because their economy at the local level is starting to thrive, that means at the greater level, our national economy has a better chance to be doing the things it needs to do. And a strong national economy is all about, in my opinion, national security. If we have a strong economy, then 
Your men and women who are going to go in uniform are going to have the tools, resources, and equipment they need to go do their jobs because not, we're not worrying about, hey, we don't have enough money to take care of them. Take care of them is job one. So I am really pleased to be able to introduce the panel. Now, as I said, this is going to be interactive. They're going to get up here, tell you, tell you a little bit about themselves, and then we are all coming down to you because we want to hear from you, and we're going to have some questions with you, and we want to have a little bit of fun. So immediately to my left, uh, we have uh, uh, Sandra Barrett, who happens to be a business opportunity specialist uh, from the Washington, D.C. area. To her left is one of you, formerly one of mine, Derek Hu, from the Naval Air Systems Command out on the West Coast. And to his left is Aaron Para, one of our procurement center representatives also out on the West Coast. Yeah. <laughs> And Sandra is far better looking than I, so I'm going to turn this over to Sandra at this point and let her talk to you about what life as a BOS is and what she's learned and what are some of the best practices you can apply. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Area 2, where are you? Well, I don't want to exclude everybody else. Hello to everybody else. From Area 3 to Area 6. <laughs> I love you guys too. Um, so yes, I'm Sandra Berry and I'm from the Washington DC area. I'm a supervisor, business opportunity specialist. Um, when I started SBA in the district office back in 2008, I was a business, a business development specialist. I don't know what that was. I guess it was supposed to develop, but not, shortly after that, they changed it, our names to business opportunity specialist. And I asked, well, what is that? And I said, opportunity? I, I don't give out opportunities. And then shortly after that, we, I just started receiving a lot of phone calls. You give out contracts? I said, no, I don't give out a contract. So our name is a little complicated, and a lot of people don't know what we do. So I'm going to tell you today what we do. Yesterday, Mr. Wong talked about the PCRs and how they're sales um, executives or salesperson. That's what we do also. Um, a lot of people kind of get confused about BOSs. You know, after the PCR goes in, negotiates, gets contract, you know, you forget about a BOS. I do the same thing. That's what I do in my office. Um, you may not hear about us, but that's what my job is. I was able to save, I got a phone call from HUD. They wanted to release a, um, a competitive out of the program because they came to me and said that 8 day companies could not do the work. And I said, well, that's not true. I said, tell me why. They couldn't really explain why BOS, I mean, I'm sorry, firms could not do the work. So I said, give me a few weeks, uh, maybe two weeks, and I could do some research for you. So what I did, I went, do my research, went to DSBS, uh, kind of um, looked at our firms and our portfolio, reached out to our neighboring district offices, and I went back and say, hey, this is what I have. You will not be able to release this out the program. So I was able to save a $40 million contract and keep it into the 8A program for our 8A firms. So that's what a BOS does. So if you didn't know, I'm also a salesperson as well. Um, but what I do, I, I do like the, the, some of our best practices with uh, DOD or just anybody, it's basically the number one thing is collaborating with the agencies. Um, in business, you follow the three P's. Uh, my P's is basically starts with uh, process, and the process is the 8A program. What do we do? We apply the law, Mr. Wong. We apply the law. We uh, uh, look at the uh, 8A firms, they can do the work or not. And then at the end of the day, I think about profit. What happens if this is taken away from an 8A company? It's profit. You know, if that's taken away, then I don't have work for my 8A companies. So I'm there to be an advocator, to be an educator, to enforce the law, and a motivator. Uh, you all don't know the things that we go through. Um, I'm a preacher, I'm a counselor, I do it all. We touch these people. We touch, I'm telling you, please do not arrest me. Uh, me touching in a good way. <laughs> in a good way, we, we do. But I know when they're getting a divorce, you know, when they have kids, they're my family. So my job is to assist them. And when you come to me with a problem, the first thing I say is, well, how can I help you, DOD or anybody else? Tell me what you need from me. And then we're there to work and help each other out. Um, my position is very tough because I'm an advocate for small businesses in 8A program and also small businesses at the same time. But I'm also a government official. So I have to think about, I'm one location, I'm trying to help my, my firms, and then I have to jump to another location and say, I wear a hat, I also am a government employee. 
So I have to think about what's best for the government as well and for my firm. But some of the examples with um, DOD comes from WHS, where are you? Woo! Um, Air Force in DC. All right. Um, DFAS, where are you? All right. The MIC. Uh, just helping you out and saying, what can I do for you? Yesterday I was talking to my good friend from um, DFAS and we're working on a project and he said to me, and I said to him, well, do you want me to go back to the firm? Do you want to go back to a firm and ask them specific questions? He said, no, Sandra, I trust you. I trust you going back to the firm and asking these specific questions and then coming back to us to say, I, I will identify, where's the attorney? I will not recommend, I will identify these firms for you. I follow the rules. I will identify these firms for you. And, and you know what, that really touched my heart because you all trust me to do my job and come to me and say, Sandra, you're doing a great job by helping me um, and my agency act on this mission. And that's what I love about it. One success story before I leave is with the MIC. The MIC came to me maybe a month ago, and they said to me, uh, Sandra, I need you to approve an offering letter for $18 million in one day. I said, whew, that may be impossible, but I can try my best to execute that that same day. Well, the problem was it was a joint venture. So you know for joint venture, you have to make sure that the joint venture was approved in our office prior to award. You all know the regulations, 124, 513. I don't have to tell you about that. <laughs> And I did my job, my due diligence, when I went back, guess what? The joint venture was not approved. And I went back and asked, what's the time frame? When are you going to award that contract? Whew, they gave me some time. And I went back and said, oh, the, the joint venture is not in-house. I don't have anything. The good thing is they already had an approved joint venture, and all they needed was to submit an addendum, an addendum to that contract. I went back, called the lady, and told, told the firm to say, hey, can you get this in? Lord have mercy, I had to have patience with the lady. She could not understand what I was talking about, so I had to break it down. My BD team, where are you? Please stand. They got on top of it. They called the lady, and um, let me tell you something. Monday morning, she was in there at 7 o'clock. We do not open at 7. We open at 8.30. But she was there with the security guard said, I need to speak with Sandra. And I'm like, this is too early. I don't come to work that early. But we were able to assist her, and by Tuesday morning, I'm telling you the truth. That joint venture with my team, the BOS, and my district council, and my district director, and everybody, will prove that joint venture, and she was awarded an $18 million contract by the MIC. MIC, thank you. Thank you over there somewhere. And the, the best thing about this success story is that the, the firm was going to give up. She said, Sandra, I was going to give up, and I was not going to submit a proposal. But I'm glad she did. That was her first 8A competitive, and it was an $18 million. So I thank the MIG for giving us some time and my staff for working on it. And I'm done. I can sit here all day and preach and talk to you all. I'm going to let my other colleagues come here and talk about what they do and how they can help you. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Is Mr. Wong here? Where is he? Mr. Wong, I admire your passion. And for some people that thought I was Mr. Wong, my name is... Derek, Derek, I know yes. how you feel. I get that all the time. They're confusing us now. My name is Derek Hu. <laughs> but I'm very humbled here to speak to such a passionate group of advocates. And thank you so much for what you do. And one thing I do want to do, for those of you with the red veterans on, can you raise your hand, please? Applause. Thank you. Thank you so much for your service for our country. Today and yesterday, I actually arrived 
on Monday, but yesterday and today I've seen a trend of best practices and what we need to do. And a couple of things that I've gotten out of the presentations is relationships and building relationships and building trust with our acquisition teams. I am very blessed because I work for an organization that the senior executives and the commanding officer, which is a one-star admiral, believes and fully supports our philosophy on small business programs. And that philosophy is, we are not a handout organization. You have to earn our business at the Naval Air Systems Command. And how many of you have family or friends that are serving or have served in the Navy or the Marine Corps? Raise your hands. There's a ton, I bet you. One thing I didn't understand was somebody called me out, one of my peers, small business specialist, I'm not going to call you out here, actually retired, and said, I don't like that philosophy on you want only the best because we're a socioeconomic program and realize that you may not get the best. So the thing about the Navy is, do you realize, see I'm ex-Air Force, so they didn't even consider me military. <laughs> when I had the privilege of touring some of the ships, I realized that, did you know that our sailors and Marines sleep with their weapons? So how can in, you, in good conscience not advocate for the best. Can you imagine if we awarded that fuse in the missile, by the way, the fuse is the one that makes the missile blow up, to the fourth best business? You imagine if your children were serving on that boat or that ship? That is why I, my executives fully support the program and the philosophy on small business. So you have to earn our business. And I realize that it may be tough, but I think our sailors and Marines deserve the best solution for their warfighter, bar none, regardless of your large or small. So one of the things that we like to do when we're running our program is have the best relationships with our SBA, with GSA, with the PTACs, with our, especially with our acquisition teams. The cool thing about my command is with the support of your senior executives and your admiral, I don't get much pushback when we engage with our acquisition teams. And I also feel it's very, very important to engage with our SBA. So my SBA PCR is here, Aaron Para. And what we do at the Naval Air Systems Command Weapons Division is we take time and we spend travel dollars because I work in the middle of nowhere. We're two and a half hours away from Los Angeles in the middle of the Mojave Desert. We do weapons and weapon systems integration. So then you understand why I have that philosophy of only the best, because we don't want these weapons blowing up where they probably should not be blowing up. <laughs> so what we do is we brief the SBA with, along with their BOS folks quarterly to let them know what our metrics are, and some of the things that we really have to be careful, some of the things that are coming up, because we try to keep up on our long-range acquisition forecast and some of the problem contracts that are coming up so it doesn't catch them off guard. And that's one thing I don't want the SBA to be caught off guard, because that's, you talk about, we had a session just about downstairs, and we talked about the fear <laughs> of the small business specialist. What I do in our activity is bring in the fear of the SBA. So you, there's two people that can stop procurements, right? 
First one is a contracting officer. Second one is the SBA. So that's why we have a really good relationship with our SBA, and we keep them in the loop. And sometimes we probably spend more time than we should, and he's probably like, I got a lot of other stuff to worry about, so please, thank you very much, but you're, we're good. But I think we owe it to them to let them know that this is, these are the things that are happening. And one example I'd like to share with you about the relationship is, or actually, I'll talk about the philosophy. So what happens, all of the new contracting interns and everyone doing rotations to the contracts organization, we get them in the first week because the contracts department actually considers us as part of the acquisition team. So we are included in contracts leadership meetings weekly, PCO forums bi-weekly where I also present metrics to the contracts organization. We also are part of the first day training for all of the new contract specialists and new contracting officers. So you see where the relationship's going. We are also involved in briefing the command staff, which consists of our chief, chief of staff and our commanding officer on a quarterly basis. So that sets the stage for the seat at the table. And that's why we feel that the relationship is very important to get the job done and to push our small business pro programs. <clears throat> One of the things I don't like doing is forcing things on people that they don't want to do. So the relationship thing is very, very difficult to do. But luckily for me and Rowena Geyer, who's our small business professional, we've been in contracts for 15 years plus. So we know all of the people. And I've been in this position for long enough that all the interns that came through our office for rotations and for tours and for training are now contract specialists, contracting officers, and we actually have three that are contracts managers now. So we are changing the culture for small business advocacy by building that relationship. So we get included usually early in the process. I'm not gonna say we're perfect, because no one's perfect, because we do get forgotten once in a while. But we get our seat at the table. And one of the things I kinda wanna mention that Sean said to give an example of a best practice, and it just happened. A couple of months ago, we've had a small business set aside for aerial and seaborne targets. And this contract has been in existence for probably 20 years, 15 that I know of. It's been a small business set aside, but for the last three procurements, we've only received one offer. And we have a brand new staff, brand new contract specialist, brand new contracting officer, brand new acquisition team, which, oh, by the way, my office has trained all of them, so they engaged early with the source of thought. And he said, Derek, I have a concern. I don't think we can justify a small business set-aside anymore because there was only one that responded to the sources sought that we determined to be fully capable, and the three others were partially capable. And oh, by the way, it's the incumbent that has the contract for the last three iterations. There was the one bid. So we're going to recommend a full and open competition. So, of course, I get engaged, and I said, okay, hold on a second, because I have historical knowledge on that contract, because I've been here for a while, and I think, I think what's happening is we've had what we call an entrenched vendor. The vendor's doing such a great job, which is a good thing, because it's good for our business, but no one is going to bid against them because it's a waste of their BNP dollars. So I reached out to the whole acquisition team and met with them, and I said, I think from the last market research, you guys had three that you determined to be capable. And they said, we think so, but they didn't respond this time. So I said, well, what prevents you from reaching out to them 
and doing some kind of informal capability presentation and talking to them about what's going on with this procurement. And they said, can we do that? I said, why not? It's part of market research. Why not? Luckily, two vendors would accepted the offer and actually came to the site for our whole team. And one went, wanted to meet by phone. The first vendor that showed up, so here we are sitting in the meeting. I have the new contract specialist, new contracting officer, new acquisition lead, contracts manager, subject matter experts from the acquisition team, and the core, and my office with the two of us. And I walk through discriminating criteria with the acquisition team before the vendor comes in. So what are your discriminating criteria? And that usually stumps them because they don't understand. I say, well, what makes the vendor capable or not capable regardless of their business size? <coughs> oh, we have to think through that. Okay, that's fine. So we came up with five criteria. He said, Didn't you, why don't you talk about them? And so the first vendor shows up and said, I didn't respond to the source of thought. And he says, well, we realize that's why we were calling you in to figure out why. Why did you not respond? He says, I'll tell you why. And I said, oh, by the way, hold on, stop. <laughs> this meeting is non-attributional. And I looked at the procurement team, I said, and it's non-retribution too, because we want to hear the truth. And the vendor said, I'll tell you why. Because it's rigged. You are skewed to the incumbent. And you, I looked around the room, and all the jaws had dropped. And he, he said, and the contracting officer said, what gives you that impression? I don't, we don't understand. He says, well, look at your key personnel requirements. Look at your statement of work. Hasn't changed for all these years. You've got it rigged to the incumbent. And then he proceeded to tell us honest feedback, and that was great for the team, for, at least from, from my perspective. So when the vendor left, I said, can I gather this team here? I said, see this, what just happened here? It's fantastic. And they're like, what? I said, because you are now hearing things that I hear in my office all the time, that you had your procurements that were rigged, and you already knew who you got before you sent out for the contract. So it's a waste of our time. I call it the perceptions meeting. And the the issue was, that was his perception. Even if that wasn't the intention, that was the perception of the vendor. So the feedback was, change this, a couple of things, and then also have an industry date so I can probably team. Because they asked the question, would you bid on this contract? He says, yeah, if I knew it wasn't rigged, then I'd probably bid on the contract. And guess what? The second and third vendor had the same type of feedback. So that was eye-opening to the acquisition team. And that wasn't really, that wasn't what their intention, because we don't do contracts that way. At least I didn't do it when I was back in contracts. But it was eye-opening. So what happened, we assisted the team and had an industry day that just happened last week. We put it on an FBO, of course. And at the industry day, we had a site visit of the aerial and seaborne targets. And then we had one-on-one -on -one meetings with all the vendors and a networking session after that. And my office coordinated the event because we love industry day events. We had 17 vendors show up. Three of them said, after the honest one-on-one -on -one said that they did not know that we were open to competition. And so three of them stated that they would bid as a prime, and 12 of them said that they would participate as a subcontractor if they can find the right fit. This is a $175 million effort, and I did not want to see it go full and open competition. And oh, by the way, the incumbent was not happy about it. <laughs> and he was one of the last meetings, and he says, congratulations, Derek. He said, Last time we had three vendors show up. This time, 17. He says, congratulations on that. And I said, all I want to do is make sure, even if you get the contract, the pencils are sharpened and we have competition. That's all I want. 
But this was all made possible because of our relationship with the acquisition team, with the contracting officer. They were all willing to listen and give us that seat at the table. And with the star behind us and the executive SES behind us, that, that gives me the feeling that we're trusted. So that's the thing. And we talked about value as well. We need to show our value. That's why we went above and beyond. And I know Sherry Freeman actually talked yesterday to me and said about the behind the scenes. This is not doing 2579s. This is not doing outreach events. This is the stuff that we do behind the scenes that adds value to our, our procurement and to our program. And that's because of the relationships and the trust that we have formed with our partners in the SBA. And oh, by the way, I forgot to say this. <laughs> Nick Manalise, thank you so much because at the last minute I begged him to send SBA presence to this Industry Day event and he allowed his CMR to come out to introduce and oh by the way the introduction in the morning by the SBA coming as a presence to our Industry Day gave the impression to the vendors that no kidding we're serious about competition and we're serious about small business programs and they were also involved in the networking session and the one-on-ones. So thank you very much. I know your budget's limited, so thank you for having them come out. So thank you very much, and thank you for all you do for small business, because I'm a product of a small business, and my sister owns a small business, but I, I'm too risk-averse to own a small business, and I would never deal with the government, by the way. But, <laughs> Thank you for so much. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Aaron Para. I'm the PCR in Los Angeles, California. Where are my people at? See, you all just witnessed something extraordinary. I got San Diego to clap for Los Angeles. <laughs> I could walk off this stage now. I don't understand the chargers. Uh, yeah, you could, you could keep them. <laughs> yeah, you know. It's their problem now. So, I hope you see why I invited Derek to come, because he's amazing. And we have an amazing relationship with, uh, with Navair, but there's different kinds of relationships. Right, and uh, I'm, I'm, I want to talk. I want to talk a little bit about this kind of this this story, this event that happened to me once, and then I'll turn it back over to the crowd because we want to hear from you as well. So, I'm sitting at my desk, and one of my buying activities, who shall remain nameless, um, and I really hope I don't accidentally let it slip, but <laughs> uh, contacts me and say, hey, you know that 2579 we signed off on? It's a small business set aside. I go, yeah. He goes, my director of contracting wants to reverse that and wants more competition and wants to go full and open. I said, well, he can't do that. He's like, yeah, great. Can we get on the phone with him? And also, I'm going to pretend to be on his side. And I went, what? <laughs> now, see, for him, it's a collateral duty, which is something I disagree with, and this is the reason why. So I get on the phone, and it turns out this guy is a really good actor. And I'm going, what is going on here? This guy's trying to win an Oscar. Unbelievable. And he's arguing against me, and at the same time, sending me emails. <laughs> Remind him of this. Remind him of that. You know, we, we, we put out this source of sign. We, I'm going, what is going on? But in the end, we ended up keeping it a small business set aside. Now, I wish I could lie to you for the sake of a better story and tell you that it was some huge dollar value contract. The reality is I don't think it was. I actually think it was a fairly low dollar value contract. And I think sometimes we lose perspective when we see a bunch of contracts come through our desk, right? PCRs, we see multi-million dollar contracts all day. I know you do, all of you do as well. And we kind of think, oh, it's not really worth that much. But the truth is, those do have a real impact to small businesses. Um, you know, sometimes that's their foot in the door. Sometimes that's all they can get at the moment. Sometimes maybe they're on the, you know, brink of failure, and that's just the last little bit that keeps them going to the next contract. 
So those are important as well, and I just want to make the case for that. And now I think we should have fun with the crowd. Right. What do you think? I think we should. I think we should. All right, Aaron, Derek, Sandra, get your microphones. We're going to be sending them out to you. We're going to do a little quick show and tell. Can all of our business opportunity specialists please stand? Let's go. Woo! All right. Look around. These are the folks that are going to be helping you with your 8A portfolios. Thank you very much. You can sit. Can all of our procurement center representatives and their leadership please stand? All right. Thank you very much. And I'll tell you what, the field can do so much, but they've got to get support from headquarters. Can I have all my GCBD headquarter folks that are down here? We call them miscellaneous today. And uh, would you all stand? Michael McLaughlin. There you go, everybody. All right. These are the folks who are behind the scenes doing things. Thank you very much. All right, so here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be distributing a couple microphones. Uh, Tanika, Area 5, would you please stand up? Uh, Tom Cruise, I mean Tom Cruise, Mark, would you uh, please stand up in Area 4? And Rob Dakota, Area 6. We're going to hand you guys some microphones, all right? Because we want to get the public engaged here. And while we're doing that, I'm going to get ready to switch over to this other microphone because I'm coming down with you. Uh, I'm going to ask, uh, I, during, during the lunch today, I had the pleasure of sitting next to Scott, uh, from, who's uh, up in the state of Washington. Scott, can you stand up real quick? You're in Area 6. Where are you? There you go. No, no, you have to stay standing up, Scott. This is show and tell, okay? Scott turned to me and said, who is my PCR? Hey, Rob, would you let Scott in Area 6 know who his PCR is? Because uh, he's covering Hawaii from Washington. I'm not sure that he got the better of the deal. But so uh, help him introduce that because we want to get that networking go. I also want to do this. Uh, I said this privately. It's time I say it publicly. I uh, grabbed Dr. Jim Galvin on the staircase yesterday. And I said, you know what, Jim? You have set the exact right tone for this event and the effort of you, your staff, and your team that have pulled this together so that we can start showing this collaboration is absolutely tremendous. And I want you to give Dr. Jim Galvin a round of applause. I know you all have busy jobs and you do everything that you can do every day, but I will tell you, I know what it's like to be in the Pentagon and I know what it's like to be, not have all the staff around you and being pulled into meetings left and right. I particularly know what it's like to be working with Acting Secretary of the Navy, Sean Stackley, and I know the things that you're working on to implement things, uh, you're keeping busy. So we really appreciate the fact that you could be here. You know, the biggest Tony set for me, I think it's the first time I've seen Jim without a tie, so I took one off in his honor today. So. <laughs> All right, we're going to come down and talk to you. There's other things. All right, there's a couple other things. I want to tell you a quick story about collaboration. What I really enjoyed was the fact that the different stories that you heard didn't just focus just on SBA and DOD small business professionals and, and PCRs. Collaboration can come in many, many forms. Quick little story, okay? I loved... Alice and Mr. Manning's presentation about the career path. I want to tell you about a breakfast. This breakfast took place in the summer of 2010. I had just come on board as the director for the Navy Small Business, and much like my new boss, Mr. Wong, I arrived and they said, congratulations, next week you're in New Orleans in front of all of your small business professionals. And I said, I have no vision. And they said, well, you'll get one, get down there, all right? <laughs> but I had an advantage. I'd been on the job for five days before, he, <laughs> before I came down. And one of the things that I learned when we were starting to have our conversation is I said, this is the one thing we have to change as an organization. The law may call you small business specialists, but you're not respected in the acquisition workforce. So we're going to change the way we think. And from now on, you are small business professionals. If you don't start thinking of yourself as a professional, you won't be respected on the other side of the table. And everybody got it, and they said, that's where we're going. Then the folks in the Navy, I said, we're going to do a competency gap analysis. We've got to figure out what we're missing from a training standpoint. And we did that. And I give a lot of credit to the folks at NAVAIR. They really took the lead. But it really was all of, of 
those directors, those assistant associate directors that did that. And when I got that information, I invited Tracy Pinson and Joe McDade to breakfast at the executive lounge in uh, the executive mess in the Pentagon, and we sat down. And we had a collaborative moment. We all understood we had the same challenges with the workforce. And we agreed at that point that we had to bring everybody together and find a way to create a career path for all of you that are working in the Department of Defense. And a few months later, Andre Gudger came on board. We sat with Andre. And what I'm really excited about is that little seed turned into a big tree. And I want to thank DAU and I want to thank OSD for what you're doing for all of us. That's collaboration. OK, we're going to start working. And I'm going to start, and I'm going to pick on one of my own. Hey, Brent, how are you? <laughs> Come on, you can stand up, all right? all right? So Brent, tell everybody who you are, where you work, and what you do. OK, I'm Brent Owens, um, PCR, Area 5. I cover um, all the federal agencies in Utah, Wyoming, Montana. I reside at Hill Air Force Base. All right. Yes. So let me ask you a question, and I want everybody to be thinking about this because our phone, folks with the microphone are coming to a chair near you, all right? So, Brent, can you give me an example of some collaborative efforts that you've had up at Hill Air Force Base that you wondered where it was going to go until you started having some really good conversations? No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, JD's over here. He's the director of the Air Force Small Business Office at Hill. Um, we just call him JD, you know, James Dean. Um, before he came on board, and he'd been there about four years, uh, we had a pretty good relationship with the small business office. I did anyway as a PCR, but I had to go to every single meeting where the, that director was going because I didn't know what she was going to ever say. And that's the truth. She didn't, she didn't know what hub zone meant. She called it HUD zone. For four years, she called it HUD zone. Am I right? <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> but since JD's come on, and, we've, and I realized I needed to train him early, we, we, we sit right next to each other, and that's been a big part of it. So we've learned he knows what I expect, I know what he expects, and we, together we know what we're going to expect from the contracting offices when they come in. And that's been the key, is just being able to work closely together and know what each other expects. You got anything you want to add? Well, sure, because... Because if I'm not there, even though he's SBA, when, when people walk into our office and ask for you know, advice, I totally trust what they're going to tell them is the right way to go. And I think he does the same thing. If he's not there and I'm there, I'm going to lead him down the right path too. So we, we, we trust each other to the point of, I don't know why we're both there. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Trust. That was the word that came out. Trust. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Aaron, would you go get this lovely lady in the red, right over here? <laughs> okay. Give her the microphone. And if you would, kindly stand up. Tell us who you are, You're looking where you red. work. I know you're wearing red. All right. Let's give her some round of applause. Hi, my name is Ariel Douglas. I'm the Associate Director at the Defense Information Systems Agency, Office of Small Business Programs. All right. So what are things that work for you, Ariel? Um, if you all attended my um, acquisition planning session, um, my small business director, Sharon Jones, she um, scares the program staff and the contract Fear and intimidation fear. is... Fear. So she also tells the contracting program staff that she puts the fear in the PCR, but they work together as a team. So they fear everybody as a team. And who, who's your PCR that you work with? Martina. Martina, can you stand? Where are you, Martina? 
Way over there. All right, go take that over to Martina. Hello, Martina. Martina, what works best for you? Um, collaboration. Um, well, what's that mean? That means um, putting the fear of... <laughs> no, seriously, we, we really work well together. Um, I think Sharon, trust me, trust what I say. Um, and we don't have to collaborate a lot. But I always say, let me be the bad guy, do the good cop, bad cop thing, and put it all on me. I don't work for the agency, so I don't care what they feel about me. <laughs> and that's how I work with my agency, so. So, okay, so I want to take that one step forward. Show of hands, if you, as a small business deputies and directors where you've been, have run into a situation where you really want this to go, but you know your agency doesn't want to, and you've said, and leaned on the PCR to say, I need you to be the bad cop. Show of hands if anyone's ever tried to do that, okay? All right, all right, not as many hands, which means the rest of you are having no problems or challenges, which means all your small business awards are gonna be going up. It's a good, it's a good technique, okay? It's really a good technique if you need it. That's one of the things when I was a PCR, and I was one for 19 years, I would get the phone calls from my directors who would say, okay, I need you to be a hard ass today for me, all right, and come in and do those kind of things. If I can ask you, Tanika, would you talk to this lady right here, one of our business opportunity specialists? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Have to introduce myself. Tell us where you are, where you're from, and of course your name. I am Melissa Blair. I'm a lead business opportunity specialist in Anchorage, Alaska. Okay, wait, did anybody come farther than Anchorage, Alaska to come here? Hawaii. We got Hawaii? Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. So here's what I want to know, okay? Uh, how long have you been a business opportunity specialist? Three months. Three months. <laughs> All righty. So let me ask you this. Um, uh, obviously, you got Marion Taylor up there. Yeah. Right, working with you up, up in the great state of Alaska. And uh, you've got so, some great bases, and obviously you have uh, a, a great pool of, of uh, uh, Alaskan Native corporations. I bet that occupies your time quite a bit. Quite a bit. What have you learned in these three months that you think have helped you, or what have you learned here in the last two days that you think are going to help you going forward? This has been a fantastic opportunity to be able to come to this conference after three months on the job, I know that not everyone gets that opportunity, so thank you everyone. We have learned so much. Christy Vandendries is also from my office. She's also been here for three months, but the collaboration, working with the PCRs, and just really defining the roles and responsibilities of everyone from both PCR agencies, it's just been very eye-opening and very informative. Do I have any other folks from Alaska? Yeah, okay, and okay, so let's give the microphone over to you. First, we know now you're in the district office, right? Yes. Okay. And tell me about your three-month experience. Uh, it's like drinking from a fire hose. Um, my, I have a portfolio of ANC firms that they know the exception to the exception to the exception. And um, I have learned more from them than sitting down and reading the reg page by page because I'm now much more proficient as a result of that. So it's that open dialogue between them and me that allows us to get where we need to be. So sometimes the answer is no, and sometimes the answer is, well, not that way, but this way. Um, and being able to have those honest conversations is very helpful. That's great. Christy, how big is your portfolio? Uh, currently 30. You've got 30, and how big is yours? 15. 15, all right. And if you could stand up. Hi, my name is Della Simmons. I'm a small business professional at JBear, and I just want to attest to these ladies here. We work team. We work as a team, and as we, we've been here, Chris has been able to help me with a project as we work through this week's training. But we work with the PCR real well, with PTEC real well, and so I, I can't attest to how well we work as a team in Alaska. So thank what you. Ma what makes that work so well? 
a lot of collaboration, communication. Uh, we'll reach out uh, if I have a problem or issue. I have no problems to call and do conversations with them. We also offer uh, uh, an office for the PCR at our office, and she's at our office at least twice a week, so we can collaborate, communicate. We're a mix of military and civilians, so they can reach out and know who we're working out at the same time. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, Tom, there's a gentleman to your right in the red shirt right here. If you want to mind having to stand up. I knew with the red shirt I was going to get caught. <laughs> you know, it's like a sports car. I see you flying by. I'm pulling you over. <laughs> My name is Dwight Frank. I'm at the Air Force Test Center, the director of small business programs at the Test Center at Edwards uh, with reorganization a couple years ago. Eglin 96 Test Wing comes under us. And then Arnold uh, Air Force Base in Tennessee comes under us also. We've got 30 some odd locations across the country. Dwight, do you know who your PCR is? Yes, I do. Who is that? That would be Aaron Para. That would be Aaron Para. Well, over there. <laughs> have you, you better have say you, good had things, privilege, Dwight. Have you had that opportunity to work with uh, any of our business opportunity specialists? Uh, yes, mostly by phone calls and uh, uh, emails. I'm very happy with the support. We get, you know, as she mentioned, having a one-day turnaround. We routinely get things turned around in one day. I haven't had a JV requirement in a day or two, so it's, I know that's an easier bar to overcome, but they're very responsive. That's terrific. Thank you very much. Jan Kaiser. Jan. Yeah. We'll go ahead and get you the microphone over there. All right. Jan, tell everybody, obviously, where you are, what you're doing, and what you knew when you were coming into this job. Well, one of the things I've learned is that when he calls on you, he didn't prearrange with anyone that he was going to call on you and ask you a question. <laughs> it's that fear and intimidation. I'm on my way over here. Can you repeat your question, please? Sure. Uh, you, are, you are currently procurement center representative, but you were a small business deputy, right? Yes. Okay. Can you kind of talk about how you viewed things when you were a deputy of what SBA could or could not do for you and how you view things now that your SBA now providing that level of service? Well, uh, I have in the past also used my PCR um, to, um, to back me up, but what I would do is advise my command of what the PCR would likely say to prepare them for what the SBA might say when the SBA came in to, um, uh, to dispute or uh, discuss a DD-2579 recommendation. So that's one of the ways that I used um, SBA when I was a deputy for small business. Now being on the flip side of that, uh, now that I'm a PCR, if it becomes a habitual thing, um, then I'm wondering about the empowerment that the small business specialist is given at that activity, and that makes me look at the capability and the advocacy of the, uh, the command to be able to advocate for small business, if that makes any sense. So It uh, does. Yeah. Now, now, Jan, earlier this year, you had to take over a big responsibility for SBA. You want to tell everybody what, what you're doing the first Wednesday of every month? Sure. The um, first Wednesday of every month, I'm the host of the what used to be called the 1102 First Wednesday program, and it began in Area 4 by Dwight Johnson, who retired in March of this year. And uh, so we miss Dwight very much, and I do especially because uh, I've taken over his position as the host. But I used to, as a deputy for small business, listen to the First Wednesday program and Rob Blind from the PowerPoints that came out from the invitations and provide training to my small business contracting, uh, uh, the contracting people and the small business, part-time small business specialists that were with my command. So I, I am a part of that and if you would like to subscribe or become an invitee to the First Wednesday program, just send us an email at sbalearning at sba.gov. 
That public service announcement. Thank you, Jan. Show of hands if you've participated in a First Wednesday. Okay. We've got, I'd say, probably about half of you. We'd like to invite the other half, okay? First Wednesday was an initiative started by a PCR because he was up in Omaha, Nebraska, and he had contracting officers who said, I need to be trained, and I can't get to where you are. So Dwight took it upon himself to say, well, let me come to you via the Internet. And it's, it's been a tremendous program. We get about 700 to 1,000 call-ins every, uh, every month. And, uh, and we put the schedule out a year in advance of what the topics are going to be. The next topic coming up, I believe, Jan, correct me if I'm wrong, is going to be April 12th, and it's on subcontracting, right? Yes. Okay. So we invite you to that, and Angela Terry will be going ahead and help. Oh, with Stephanie and Sally. Stephanie and Sally. All right, Stephanie and Sally, stand up. All right, so I'm going to pick on Stephanie in a moment. Just hang, hang right there. Sandra, can you pick somebody over there? Oh, of course. She goes, good looking man, stand up here. <laughs> Tell us your name, sir, and what you do. Gerald Sullivan, subcontracting program manager for the Missile Defense Agency. And uh, I, what does a subcontracting program manager do? I s enforce the commitments that large businesses make to the small business when they uh, uh, receive an award from the Missile Defense Agency. And so, as director for the subcontracting program, I guess you'll be tuning in on uh, April 12th just so that you can give us some feedback? I certainly plan to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had a chance to talk with your commercial market representative uh, from SBA? I have not, but I have worked closely with the PCR, who is and not here today. Who's not here? Correct. Okay. Gerard Douglas? Yeah, Doug Gerard, right? Okay. He has two first names. I always get him. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, our, your CMR is uh, Ralph Buchanan. He sits in my office. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right, Stephanie. I didn't say you could sit down. <laughs> Stephanie, you're my loan size professional that's here, right? Okay, but you started out as a commercial market representative, okay? Um, you're down. Tell us where you are, okay, and tell us a little bit about the workload you get because the decisions you make affect a lot of the folks in here. Uh, my name is Stephanie Lewis. I'm in Area 5, Fort Worth, and we cover 11 states um, from Canada to, Mex to Mexico. And we have six size specialists throughout the country, uh, one in each area office, basically, although we just got to hire a new one, Helen Goza, in Area 2 to help with that workload. Uh, it's a full-time job, the size protests that come in. Uh, there's a lot of side things that go along with that, speaking on joint ventures and being asked questions about size status of all offers who are wondering how to put together um, combinations in order to be successful on their procurements that they're bidding on. So we do have a very heavy workload and we try to meet all of your needs as fast as we can within our 15 day time frame. Um, sometimes we have to get extensions because of the workload. It's particularly heavy around the end of the fiscal year um, and after the fiscal year when all of your procurements are getting protested. But. <laughs> What I've learned is um, that collaboration and information helps a lot. Like when I get in a size case, I, if it's an 8A firm, I try to call the BOS and I try to keep the agency informed along the way of my progress. If there's been any delays, a lot of times we have to go out for more information um, from the company because we do have to ask them to submit a lot of information, particularly if it's a sensible subcontracting, it gets kind of involved. I need to pick someone that stands out from New Jersey wearing purple right here. If he didn't pick me, you know you would have, Sean. That's exactly right. So what do you want to know? Okay, I'm Dawn Chartier. I am the small business deputy at NAV Air Knock AD Lakehurst in New Jersey. Um, I actually work very close with both my PCR and my BOS. My PCR is brand new and not here this week. 
but my previous PCR is Mike Sasir, and Mike, Mike is awesome. I know you all love your PCRs, but Mike even spends the time now when I have a question to sit there and go, hey, Dawn, let's talk about this. My BOS over here is Dominic <laughs> Bellafor up in our Nork, Nork office. People tell me I got a Jersey accent, I don't say it right. <laughs> and um, Dominic and I work together very well. We have started a small, we didn't, the small businesses in our area that want to do work with Lakehurst started a small business roundtable, which is just a group of, pe of small businesses helping each other. And when they need to learn something from the government, they reach out to myself, and then I reach out to everybody else. Dominic has attended almost every one of those meetings. They're done quarterly. He is actually going, him and I are actually going to talk to them. One of their questions was, what's the 8A program? What's the new mentor protege? How do I do this? What do I do when I graduate? And oh, by the way, Lakehurst, what do you do with 8As? So we're on a hook the first week in May to talk to them about that stuff. Don, thank you very much. This is the end of our session. I want to end it with this. First, I want to thank everybody who stood up and shared their stories very much. Thank you for thanking them. I want to thank you for what you do every single day, and I want to make an offer to Mr. Manning. Mr. Manning, I've had the privilege, I'm going to tell you one embarrassing story for me. I have the privilege of speaking at a Con 90 course, brand new contracting officers. This is about three weeks ago. I was real excited. I got invited to come in because they had just spent several days covering FAR Part 19. So I asked a really softball question, right? They, know, they knew who I was, they knew I was coming in, and they knew my son was in the class because he'd just been hired by the Navy, right? And uh, I said, can you tell me what a PCR is? It was silence. And I go, well, we're going to have a really fun two hours <laughs> to start it off there. But what I want to offer you is this, is that we at SBA will do everything to help collaborate with you, your classes. If there's anything that we can do to support you as you develop the career paths for these folks in educating, teaching, training, we just want to tell you we'd like to collaborate with you too. Thank you very much.